Welcome to News from the Krabby Coffee Shop with your host, Don McLean, from Jason and Alexis in the Morning on My Talk 1071, Garage Logic's newsman, Mr. FYI, John Height, and the crabbiest guy in the coffee shop, Kenny Olson. Today on News from the Krabby Coffee Shop, it's Burgess Meredith's birthday, born in 1907. Wow. Weird Al is not funny. Uh, Mike Tyson has a wonderful business idea that we're going to steal, and uh, you three are going to explain to me why the word midget is offensive. But Mm. first, firearms deer season is over in Minnesota, but the muzzleloader season, it's coming up here really soon. If you like being cold, you got to hunt the muzzleloader season. DK Mags has a few different muzzleloaders on their website, dkmags.com, and all the accessories you need to get out in the field, including scopes. Uh, But I'm going to warn you here, I've done this a few times, if you're going to mount a scope on it, buy a bunch of sabots, that's the bullets, uh, before sighting in a muzzleloader because it's an exercise in frustration and you're going to need them. Uh, Wisconsin deer season opens this weekend. It's not too late to stop into DK Mags on Old 8 New Brighton and stock up on whatever ammunition and accessories you may need. They can get you a field and help bag the game you've been pursuing. Great selection Fair prices and a wonderful staff at both DK Mags in New Brighton and Monticello Pond and Gun. Check out the website, dkmags.com. You guys, I did a thing for the show. Wow. Tell us about it. I booked a guest. Wait, wow. what? I tried for the. for this again. Uh, I tried for the. <laughs> Is it the alien abductee who grows seeds out of his nipples? <laughs> Wait, seeds? <laughs> Wait, is that what he was growing? Yes, he said his nipples were removed, and then he planted seeds there. Oh, right, and they and then they into... grow into new nipples, and they'd harvest those. <laughs> no, this is a, a guest I've been threatening to book for. Well, since we started, since, yeah, since the show's been on, you. Gene uh... Hollister of Rose uh-huh. Presents, our local. Uh, concert promoter uh i was chatting with gene via text this morning and uh gene uh, sent me something here uh very scary and uh, i i hope that you and the listeners can keep gene in uh in your prayers um he he writes here by the way i i tested positive for a negative attitude <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh To which I responded, my shrink told me the only thing that makes me happy is hate. What an F word. (laughs) This guy is going to be great. This is the kind of relationship Gene and I uh, had. Uh, have uh, one year he sent me a, uh, um, um, a Christmas card that was obviously made on a copy machine with a very angry Santa giving you the finger, giving me the finger, saying, Merry effing Christmas. <laughs> be just Xeroxed it. That's great. So um, not today, not next week, because I think, are we off or are you three doing a, a podcast? We are off next week. We have satisfied all of our needs, and the last thing that I need to do is make Mr. FYI angry again. So there will be no podcast without you next yeah. week. You felt so the, the, the heat from... Uh, from height, oh, the height yeah. heat. I like that. He was not happy. He was mm-hmm. indeed did not want to do a podcast without I you last I week or two weeks ago. He'd be off. <laughs> Kenny, you've known me a long time. You know how angry I can get. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> just, you're a rager. Uh, so yeah, Burgess Meredith, 1907. I, I just wow. threw that in because he was trending on Twitter, and I thought, what did he die again? Uh, I don't even <laughs> know when he died, but he's been gone a while, and he was in a lot of great roles actually. He was. Was, yeah. But was he ever the star player in any of them? He was the penguin, right? In, he was the uh, penguin, yep. Um, in the Batman, TV, TV series. series. Uh, oh, he was in Rocky. He played a he huge role He was the tr- role trainer, in yeah. He was yeah. the trainer in Rocky. Uh, he did that great uh, episode of The Twilight Zone. Right. Uh, do you remember that one? Yeah. It was wonderful, yeah. I just watched a short film he made on... The difference between a pub and um, a bar, and it was for World War II soldiers. <laughs> um, and he explained some of the things that happened in a pub in England. Um, that was not that funny. That sounds weird. Yeah. But it was interesting. What were the differences? Is a pub <laughs> just booze and a bar has food? Warm beer is ah. one of them. Um, 
the beer flavors are bitters and bitter or mild. And uh, hmm. the people in England go to bars to socialize, not to get S faced. Ah. And that's when I stopped paying attention. <laughs> Uh, Don, do you know any roles that he was in that uh, I, were I particularly... feel like I walked in on a conversation. Yeah, I don't Burg... know where we started. Like Burgess, what... Burgess Meredith. But what about him? Uh, it's his birthday <laughs> today. Oh, it's his birthday. Okay, I was just like, what are we? Why are we talking about him? Yeah, nineteen oh seven. Okay, I missed that part. Um, he, no, he, he died yeah. twenty five years ago, Kenny. I you don't... were wondering. I wouldn't be able to pick him out of a lineup. Oh. Oh, you know Burgess Meredith, I, Rocky, the trainer. Yeah. That, oh, that's, okay. Now he's snarling like that. Oh, rah. that guy, Clash of the Titans, or I was just gonna say, if you don't know who he is, you would recognize him once you watched a Rocky flick. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the name is really familiar. Um, okay, Ross, um, and maybe you too, Don. I don't know. Uh, I- explain to me why Weird Al is funny. I have never. <laughs> thought anything he's ever done was even remotely funny. No. Ross? Oh, well, I guess it's just me here. I appreciate the talent of being able to just be a wordsmith and make parodies. I, uh, and, and I, ha- you know, I, I'm going to be on Ross's side on this, oddly enough. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, Kenny. No, what? I, I think, look, I'm it's... J- I'm John, not Kenny. <laughs> oh, sorry, thank you, John. Oh, did I lose your support already? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> no, I, I look, I mean, he's not really inventing the music. We all get that. And I'm, I don't even know if he's a good musician. I, I Maybe John could speak to that more. I just appreciate the talent of being able to entertain, being able to be yourself, and have some fun with it. Look, a lot of his parodies i don't love but there are some that i think are great and he also yeah, he, has written a lot of original music so i don't even know has? if it's a yeah oh the half half of his albums usually uh, are oh the biggest ball of twine in minnesota is a great jam i'm gonna send it to all of you guys Mm-mm. the, no, the no, problem no, don't subscribe the, the problem that. with novelty records are if you hear <laughs> them once and you like them that's all you have to hear you yeah i just it feels again. like just that's one joke problem. that's gone on for yeah. too yeah. long like, and, and if it's clever, great. I don't mind, but I don't want to hear it. It's kind of like a dad joke that's in a that's a song, you know. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I'm, I don't get him. There used to be a song parody guy, and maybe John, you'll remember. He, I know, he lived in Milwaukee, and he was always on the road in the Richard Midwest. Cheese. Yeah, Richard Cheese. Dick, Dick Cheese. <laughs> no, isn't that who you're talking about? Yeah. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have jumped no, the gun there. No, no but okay. that's, that's... I forgot no, about is, him. Is, I don't know who he is. My, you don't know who name. Richard Cheese is? Oh, I do not. Oh, my God. His is more he like... on albums, or he used to, all the time. And his is more like <laughs> Muzak style, right? His He'll is just... like, he's like, hey. Like, he's he's like a lounge singer, but he yes. sings about I, I weird, him, yeah. just dirty stuff. We used to get his uh, CD, like, every year at the ah, radio stations. Really? Yeah, he oh, has I've probably, like, oh, like God. 50 volumes. Do you ever see him live? No, uh-uh. But he's well, in a movie. He's, yeah, he's in a, that Kristen Wiig, um, A Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar. He's in that movie. He's the lounge I, singer. Oh, I that's him. I think so, yeah. Oh, well, that he's hilarious in that movie. He's singing about bosoms all the time. Yes. I must really need to see that movie because you've now name dropped it. And newsflash, I work on some other podcasts, and Stacy and Hutch oh, on KS95, really? they also <laughs> say that that movie is tremendous. So. It came yeah. out in the, just like nobody, we had not been to the movie, we had not seen anything, like for a year of the pandemic, and then that came out. So it was really, um, it was r- at the right time, let's just say that. You either hated it, I paid $20 to see it. Obviously, wow. this topic came up because you're offended by people watching the Weird Al movie on Roku. Is that the is that the deal, Kenny? So uh, I have Roku in my office here. Does that mean I can watch it yep. for free? Yep. Do you I can, have to pay mm-hmm. for it? Nope. You can watch it for free. There's no way I last more than five minutes. Well, and the movie, it's everybody thought it was a biopic, but it's classic Weird Al. None of it is true. They basically take his life yeah. story, and there might be shreds of truth, but they they times it to the thousandth degree to make it yeah. ridiculous. Don't they turn him into like a superhero at some parts, where he's saying yeah. America, that kind of thing? For most of the movie, Madonna is running the drug cartels. I see. <laughs> She's actually in it. No, no it's, it's a fake. It's, Madonna. it's a fake Madonna who's hot. Hmm. Oh. That sounds fascinating. Uh, Just to uh, can't show wait. you how 
how out of touch you and I are. Since 2000, Richard Cheese and Lounge Against the Machine, that's the name of his band, Lounge Against the Machine, <laughs> have released 28 albums. Yeah, Good. And I, sure. I've never heard of them. Yeah, never then he them. was wow. in the movie. Yeah, I just checked to make sure. Yeah. Well, there used to be a guy that lived in Milwaukee. He always performed over here in Minneapolis. Um, I think at Five Corners Saloon or one of those places near Cedar and Riverside. And uh, I went one night, and it was boring. It, it wasn't funny, and it wasn't interesting, and the, the audience was just lapping it up. They loved it. There were even celebrities in the audience. Doing parodies or? Yeah, just doing comic goofball dumb songs. I think movies, books, and music are incredibly subjective, even though I'm the one that's more right than most people. So <laughs> I don't get oh. I don't get too offended by what people like or don't like because there is some subjectivity of to course, it. Of course, yeah. So yeah. if you don't get Weird Al, that's fine. I would say that's more on you than the people who get Weird Al and Weird Al himself. You know, no, it, it's not on me. It, it, no, it, not at all. It's, no, it's, I just don't think it's funny. No, it's not funny. It, it, it's at like all. reading a comic strip. Yeah, There's a fine line. Where you go, <laughs> you kind of uh, chuckle, but it's not like going to stick with you. Oh, that you crazy definitely don't Charlie wanna... Brown always kicking that football. <laughs> yeah, how many more times is he going to fall oh, for God. it? I like, I like comic strips too, so I guess I'm out no, of the No, I don't like comic strips. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but it's the same equivalent to me. Like, it shouldn't, it's not going to change my life. No, I'm not going to seek it out. Well, and there's a fine line between there's some guys comedians who sang weird songs that did bits too. You remember Martin Mull when he actually was on stage? I thought he was brilliant. Oh yeah, yeah, from and Night he Court. Would, yeah, right? he would. No, or no, that's Richard Martin Mull. Mull. Yeah, Martin Mull. You, you guys don't know Martin Mull. Kind I, I Mull. know him from yeah. like a Letterman and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, he would go. He would sit on stage and he'd play guitar and he'd sing a song and then he'd do a bunch of jokes and then he'd play guitar. He oh, basically really? did the. Did you ever watch Fernwood Tonight, where he was the host of the fake talk show? Yeah, he, the same kind of act. Only to have a guitar and do a song now and then. But he'd be the real smarmy kind of. Hey, you know. That oh thing yes, Fern, yes. Fernwood Tonight was that the inspiration for Zach Galifianakis's, however his name's pronounced, between two ferns? No, it was it was a fake talk show, and Martin Mull was the host. I don't remember what his name was on the show, but uh, his sidekick was played by Fred Willard, and together oh, they, Fred they were Willard. they were. They you mentioned a, another guy that's not funny in any way, that uh, Zach Jack yeah. guy. Zach I've, Galifianakis? I've never found Zach him all that funny either. So not uh, not even curious to me. John, give me a curious. long-winded and very boring explanation on why you think uh, Weird Al is in, any good at all. Well, I, do, I think what he does is, <laughs> is tough to do. I think it's tough to parody songs uh, and make Dawn them and I could whip out. You know what? We could whip out a, a parody song in ten minutes. Yeah. Why don't you start writing the lyrics for Garage Logic songs, and I'll do the music? Because Joe's always want me to do a bunch of parody songs. I didn't. I, I, I didn't. Oh, he he wants. Oh, he parody wants songs. Well, he wants stuff like I was doing at the beginning of the show when we first started, when I was doing one or two a week. He wants stuff like that all the time, and I, no, I don't want to. You know what? What, I, what Joe wants and what Joe gets, that's two different. <laughs> well, I agree. You know, I he agree. wants an attentive staff, too. Remember? You know, it's, just, it's not going to happen. Remember that song <laughs> about 10 yeah. years ago, whoever sang, she was like 17 years old at the time, she had that royal song. Remember that? We will never yeah, be Royals. Yeah, whoever Royals. saying that, right? Yeah. yeah. And the Kansas City Lord. Royals Lord, thank Lord. you. And the Kansas yeah. City Royals, of course, adopted that because that was during their back to back runs to the World Series. Well, I'm telling you, I'll tell you what, Weird Al did his cover and it was aluminum foil and it's incredible. So you guys need to listen to that. <laughs> With aluminum foil. I don't think uh, I don't think you're turning them for us, Ross. You're not turning them, okay? <laughs> Uh, the biggest ball of twine in Minnesota will do it. It's a genius <laughs> song. Joy I don't get people I, I, that uh, buy his albums. I, I've never understood. No, that. and, and I, have... I don't. I, I'll be honest. Right. I'll be clear about that. I don't. I'm just saying when you hear a Weird Al song, you're going to listen. That's there are strong. people who have worked at the station who are. You remember Paul Black, don't you, Kenny? This I makes sure so much. If you're going to tell me, yeah, of course, huge, he's a magician too. Huge Weird Al he, fan. He does Every magic he, in the hallway. Every time he he'd does. come to town. He'd go see Weird Al and yeah. buy all the albums, and he'd go on and so on and on. And I'd, I'd just kind of look and shake my head and go. He puts oh, on okay. a heck of a show. 
God, are we going to have a podcast musicians. about freaking Weird Al? Don, Don I am so <laughs> this sorry. This is why I it's not being up. sold. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been doing this for almost a year and a half now. Yeah. yeah. So let's do something else. <laughs> yeah. It's topics like this, Ross. Never send us this kind of crap again. Okay, I've got an idea. The biggest Uh-oh. ball of twine in no, Minnesota. And stop singing. <laughs> If we can't get more listeners and more clients, we've I'm not got to, doing it anymore. We've got to go on the offensive. We need our own product. We need a Krabby Coffee Shop product. Well, what what do they call um, a merch? That's what we need. Coffee merch. mugs? Uh, no, none of that crap. Um, we need something that sells, uh, not a cartoon image of my big fat head. No way. Uh, and, and I think we're going to steal an idea from Mike Tyson. Um, because Mike yeah. Tyson, um, along with Vander Holyfield, are releasing uh, their own little line of gummies with weed in them, um, shaped like an ear. Um, and because, with a bite out of it. Right, because uh, Mike took a, a bite out of uh, Vander's ear when, when he was losing a fight to him. I think it was, God, wasn't it 96 or 7? 97. They say they've 97. ironed it all out. And right. they're friends now. Even the picture of them... Their promotional picture is them in holiday sweaters, right. like holding up their gummies, <laughs> and they they're starting to look like the same person almost. Is it just me, you guys, or um, Mike was just a, a real jackass in his youth, a real ass? Oh, he was yeah, yeah but for years, in, plenty in, of legal trouble too. In his older age, he's turned into Jimmy Carter. He he's a wonderful <laughs> yes, human he being. Is. It's great. He's you know, just he started awesome. out very, very um sweet. Um I listened to a podcast about his upbringing. He wrote a book or I, I believe um he used to raise pigeons. Yes. And um he used to get like beat up for it and he was just a sweet kid and and really bullied. Um and, you know, they like Killed the pigeons. I mean, it's really sad. And you're like, so he got into boxing, I think, because yeah. he wanted to protect himself. Yeah. yeah. And if you ever saw any of his matches, he was just 100% rage. Yeah. yeah. Before Absolutely. and during yeah. the first. I don't, I don't know how many <clears throat> actually went to the second round, but most of them ended right away. Because it was just straight up rage, just slaughtering these guys. Yeah, basically, mm-hmm. it's like I'm here to kill you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is like really scary. That was uh, that was something for sure. And then his career took a bad turn, you know. And it's like a, a almost a cliche among champion um, boxers where they get to the top and they get soft and lazy, and then they get beat, and then they make a comeback and blah blah blah. I mean, how many times have we seen it in? Uh, in that sport, but these new gummy bears, I think this is, uh, I think this is what we need gummy to do. Gummy ears. Next. Oh, we, we need to have crabby coffee gummies. Yeah. Well, we and, have to just just make them somewhere else, right? Uh, let's oh, no, worry. We can wor- do let's it here. worry about that off the air. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I just wanted to bring up that Missouri just legalized marijuana for everyone. Oh, they well, did. Uh huh. Alle- allegedly, the new legislature. Uh, apparently is going to do that here from what the governor has said. Yeah, because Democrats control. he's tired of these other people on the ballot that say, like, legalize now. That's their party. And he's like, right. we got to get these. This is the strategy. Like, <laughs> this is there were two people running under that two different weed parties. Yeah. And I just think he's like, it's splitting my vote. Like, it's people that are. On probably my side of the fence here, and I need to get those votes. So let's just get this over with and legalize it so that we can get these people off the ballot, you know? And start making some money on yeah, this. Yeah, right. Yeah, and we have it now legal in low-dose form or whatever. Remember yeah. that that, yeah. that I, took I place about a year ago. I didn't ago. know that. Huh? Low-dose yeah. form. Yeah. Inter- interesting. They, they passed it last session. And really? Really? Don't you remember the legislature said uh, the uh, Republican I said remember, I didn't. John. I, I, I didn't I read remember. the bill. <laughs> I didn't read the bill. I didn't know it legalized. Oh, okay. I did. Yeah, I didn't know that. It's three yeah. percent. Yeah, last session. And yeah. I hear tell that some of these three percenters are pretty strong. <laughs> I'm so uh, confused. I'm I, so yeah, I've I've heard things from people. Um, that's a percentage of THC in each gummy, I believe. Don't How much is in a joint? 
100 percent. Yeah, it depends on. 100. <laughs> depends on your mix. <laughs> no, I don't know. That's depends probably on... true <laughs> because know. it is. I'm yeah. so stupid. 100. <laughs> percent Oh God. Uh, but first of all, what's the Krabby Coffee gummy shop look like? It's got to be. It's. It can't just be a gummy. It's got to be in the shape of. Um, I don't know. Ross's big giant head. Um, Oof. Mine. A, co- a coffee cup, um, a, co- a coffee bean. Like what? The the gummies make each one a different Wait. one of our faces. A different one's character. Ross, one's me. Oh, one's you. One's that, John. Yeah. And do we want to do gummy bears or do we want to just do um, gummy uh, heads? THC infused um, beans. Coffee oh, coffee beans. Coffee beans? beans with weed in them. Is that so possible? You get, so you get wired and. Tired. tired. Wired and tired at the same time. So now you'll know what life is like in the radio business. Right. Yeah. Doing a morning show. That's and just what it is. What do they taste oh. like? They've got to have a taste. We don't want to just go with strawberry, blueberry, raspberry, you know, yellow, do we? Do we How want about co- bitter? coffee flavor? Bitter? <laughs> bitter and mild? Taste. Oh, for gummies or coffee? Yeah. No, for uh, the gummies. Um, I want mine to be butterscotch. Butterscotch? Because that's crack. To me, I was given it as a little infant. My grandpa used to take butterscotch and, you know, put it on my tongue. I couldn't even. God, I was I like one, one month old. The butterscotch. Or two weeks or something. And my grandpa's feeding me butterscotch. My mom flipped out. Oh. But I, I still love it to this day. The butterscotch Can't... dipped cone from Dairy Queen oh. is incredible. God. The, Can't uh, you my, get that in liquid form to pour on your ice cream at home, too? You can. Yes. Yep. Oh, yes, yes. My kid uh, is home for a little bit here visiting, and he uh, asked Mom to make some butterscotch chip cookies. Oh, those and are so I, good. I had not had a butterscotch chip since I was probably 10 years old. Oh, so I took man. a handful handful out of the bag and ate them. It was That's it was orgasmic. Are those the it ones was, that look like sugar cookies, but then they have those chunks of, like, well, I guess it is butterscotch. They're just cho- the chocolate they chip cookies. Like but they're tiny they use, little raindrops, though, don't they? You, you, yeah, mm-hmm. they look like raindrops, but you grab a handful and throw them in your mouth, and it's heaven. It's just, oh, my God. By it's the amazing. way, uh, Dairy Queen or anybody else listening, if you <laughs> would like... We're done with Dairy Queen, If Ross. you would like <laughs> Dawn... Dairy Queen. <laughs> if you would like Dawn to endorse your butterscotch <laughs> or butterscotch products... GarageLogic.com keyword partner. Yeah. That's GarageLogic.com keyword partner. I, I don't have the dilly bars. Too, I'm having a cartoon beer. bubble of leading Dawn astray via yeah. a trail of butterscotch uh, little things no. out of out of the control room, <laughs> down the hall, yeah. <laughs> across the hall, content, into KS95, yeah. in, into the control room at <laughs> KS95, <laughs> oh. <laughs> right at a microphone, right there at <laughs> where. Where's Dawn? You're just following the trails of butterscotch. What through is the this, building? like Hansel yeah. and Gretel, except I don't have a Hansel? <laughs> yeah. right. Where's the witch? Right. I, ha- I have found lots of uh, THC uh, whatever in coffee beans, so that oh, is that being exists? done. that exists? That is being done, yes. Yep. Wired and tired. Yeah, we could huh. do that anytime we wanted, apparently. How Cannabis do you, coffee. How do you go about getting these things from the idea to the package i mean how do you money yeah yeah which none yep. of us have these right. are all companies coffee companies can the ones i'm looking at they're all established coffee companies that uh, sell coffee anyway so just moved Listen. on to that uh, thing added that okay i just want to just say on this podcast that that idea is our intellectual property <laughs> actually it's now Probably garage logic. We no, will sue garage. you. Anyway, Somebody. don't use it because I'm coming after you. Yeah. I will be... get my law degree in five days <laughs> <laughs> because I'll be so mad. <laughs> You'll be hearing from our legal department. Yes. I really feel crabby. I really feel crabby today. What has set Whoa. you off, my dear? A um, couple of things last night. Um, some people believe in with our paranormal team, not on the team, but people who contact us, that we're waiting by phones like it's a telethon. 
ready for their call day and night yeah. and that we can jump in a car at any time because we don't have real jobs and right. we are there to serve them 24-7. Right. And if you don't, they're going to maybe just cuss you out in an email or give you a bad review online and be a psycho. And I'm over it. I'm over it. I'd love to hear one I'm of sorry, these I'm sorry. How calls. far away do you live? Okay. That's out of our region, but we'll go ahead and take care of you anyway. But, you know, we had to cancel something last night because of weather. I'm yeah. not going out in the freezing rain for, you know, traveling an hour and a half each way yeah. to wreck my car and not be able to come in this morning. And just right. let this person. <sighs> Gave you a bad review. They didn't, well, I don't know if they have or not, but they sent a nasty email, even though I've had three conversations with her on the phone and through email about what's happening in her house. Do you ever just open up a number nine can of whoop ass on these jackasses and just lay it down? Just listen, listen, B word. Here's the deal. No. And just stand up for yourself and fight back. No, because it's not for me to do the, our, you know, we've been around a very long time and we have a good reputation, but how dare you say that we aren't serving you? Like we, I'm like, I'm confused. I wrote them back and said, I don't know where we've gone wrong here since I answered your email immediately and have talked to you multiple times and opened your emails from 2 a.m. in the morning. So I just, I'm, I'm mad. What was the deal? Um, Did they have, is it a a she or a he? It's a her, right? Yeah. And does this psycho have a ghost problem (laughs) where she's being harassed at night? Uh, Yeah. And she has kids, which is why we're like, we literally put her in the front of, we canceled other investigations so that we could serve her. Right. Right. And she's also admitted to me that she's like given bad reviews to other teams, that another team told her we can't get out to you until January, which is like, that's legitimate. We just had October and the holidays are coming up. We're real people with real jobs. We don't we don't get paid for this. Right. And so I'm just like, it's still I know that I shouldn't get so upset about it. But no, you should don't call me or I don't (laughs) even know. It's like we and then she here's the deal. We were like, we will clear your house for you because obviously she takes pictures of all this stuff that I can't see anything in them. But she's convinced that it's terrorizing her kid in the night and the kid's super scared. So we're like, that comes before others. So we're going to bump back all these people that have been waiting to come out to you where you live more than an hour away. Okay, we had to cancel. And then she just goes off. And I just I just want to. Just you need, her in a ditch. <laughs> you need to ignore <laughs> your instincts and just go off on her. Listen, psycho. The reason the ghost is haunting you is because you're a creep and you deserve it. <laughs> exactly. And you're probably bringing it on yourself with all your... Actually, I think she's using your kid as bait. Yeah, your rotten little kid is hellbound anyway. So, <laughs> you, you know, give her give her both barrels. Don. I just... Uh, yeah. And then it's like you're really... She's super, super into paranormal stuff. And it's like I think that you are just super interested in in participating with us and yeah. that will not happen mm-hmm. let me just right. tell you that's right. not how we work right so you can think again lady she's been <laughs> watching those frauds on the travel channel yeah she's all and i think that show. she's really like i think like honestly people can manifest things themselves mm-hmm. by like wow. just uh-huh. being a kind of a you know negative person and like wanting i think she just wants the attention honestly absolutely she, we also found that she wrote a book which oh. has a lot oh. about about paranormal stuff that she self published that is full of misspellings. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, it's hard to even get through the email. So first, learn to read and write, and then give me a call. <laughs> Sorry, this is the crabby copy shop, but this is what you come here for. So I'm giving it to you. Uh, boy, I would love to chat with her. That, that would be really fun to rake her over the coals. Maybe we could make her cry. That'd be fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, thanks for letting me get that off my chest. I also... This is the words of Don McLean, not the society I'm with, by the I, way. I don't think anybody has the right to send emails or text messages like that. I've said that numerous times. You can disagree with maybe decisions that we're making, but there's a civil way to do that stuff. You don't you don't get to send that stuff and try and ruin people's nights or days. And by the way, to your point, Don, people need to be cognizant of the time of year. 
it's not easy to drive this time of year right. unless the conditions are perfect. And by the way, the roads have basically been ice for two days now because yeah. we've been teetering on 32 degrees and it's been sleeting for two days. Absolutely. So it's just calm like, down. Yeah, this just it's crazy. Like, I get it that it's weather, but I'm done with paranormal teams because I just it's just like, why don't you look and that the common denominator is you. <laughs> yeah. Lady. Yeah. Uh, At yeah. some point, it's not everybody else. It's you, right? That's yeah. right. Go can apricots with yourself, lady. With yourself. <laughs> yeah. With yourself. Yeah. Uh, um, well, where do we go from here? Uh, Once I upon don't... a time, Kenny doesn't understand why the word midget is offensive. Uh, I really don't. Why? Hmm. And I have come to learn... That also offensive is the word dwarf, but dwarfism is not offensive. The word dwarf Hmm. is offensive? According to what I'm looking at here on uh, Oxford Languages Dictionary. Oh. I was told years ago, I mean years ago, probably, I don't know, a decade or so ago, I don't know. Pretty much when it comes to that topic, every... Every word is out except for at the time it was little people. Little but even people. I thought little people's demeaning. Is that an ableist slur, which is also something I've just learned within the last few months? If somebody's a fat, you can't call them a lard ass. <laughs> if somebody, you know what I mean? You can't use the R word for mentally, yes, um, yes. Dis, what, whatever the correct Handicapped. Term is. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Disabled. Is either of those. No. So is that what... You can only call yourself a lard ass if you want. If it's you, yeah. yeah. See, I, I think I'm immune from these things. I have been being, I've been insulted my whole life. And you just roll with it, don't you? You shake yeah. it off. One of my best buddies, when I was out of radio, I was working in the digital imaging um, world, and a good friend of mine, Colin, he was... Um, He's from England, and he was in the services, underwater demolition team services. Oh, after, no. after he retired, he was one of the welders that worked on the Channel Tunnel outside, oh, ooh, wow. underwater. He was also a, a motorcycle and car racer, and after a race one day, his motorcycle started on fire and uh, burned 90% of his body, unrecognizable. I mean, his ears are gone, his face is a charred mess, well, one of his hands is all destroyed. He's in pain all the time. He's 100% scab, uh, scabs, you know. Uh, yeah. And I actually, he, he would refer to me as fatty. He would call me fatty, and I would call him scabby. And we would go like that back and forth, insulting each other, just the most awful, awful insults you could possibly imagine. And we were great friends. We got along great. Now, we were both crabby all the time. Maybe that <laughs> helped. But I don't understand why people are so s- sensitive about simple, dumb words. Fatty and scabby, you would have been a great 1980s wrestling tag team. <laughs> and coming to the ring, weighing a combined 480 pounds, fatty! You would and one of, scabby! One of his hands was just a stump. It was just a bunch of fingers that had melted yeah. together. And Did you call him Stumpy, too, then? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he doesn't and the things he could, scoop. The things he could... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, none of these injuries seemed to slow him down at all. He was amazing. There was nothing he couldn't do, including he tried to go back into racing, but his doctor got PO'd at him because it would break all his scabs loose. Oh, my. Yeah. So it isn't just scars, it's scabs? Yeah, it's just a disaster. <laughs> I've never said that. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> this is terrible. But the reason we're bringing this all up is because, did you send this story, Don? Uh, I did, yes. Don't use me to parent your kid. This... Man, with, man with dwarfism seeks petty revenge on mother after she calls him one of Santa's elves. Yeah. Buddy now, the Elf, what's your favorite color? So um, <laughs> he's tired of kids, well, parents in general, just asking him to, you know, discipline their kids around Christmas time because they're like, look, there's Santa's Elf. He's going to know if you're naughty. I mean, right. that's terrible. 
Um, so in public, he has these interactions. Um, a kid will come up to him and ask, ask him why he's short. I have a pre-prepared response for that. But most of the time, they just loudly ask their parents why I'm short. Yeah. And then they're, they, they drag well, their kids away. It's how, sad. How much of that can you really stop, though? Kids are going to ask questions. Kids are going to be inquisitive. I, I think uh, the, in this story in particular, he's not too upset with the kids, but it's the parents that he's raging at. Yeah, he is raging at them. Um, and that you should teach your kids basically that, you know, there are different kinds of people out there in the world. And he's fine with parents that say that. Like, listen, there are people that are born different in this world. And, um, you know, that's that's one, fine. One, yeah, one, just like Weird Al. It's fine to be weird. Uh, oh, my no, gosh. He's trying too hard to be weird. Uh, how about this one? Sometimes I hear a gem from a parent that says, I bet he shrank in the wash. Now, that's just not nice. <laughs> that's no. mean. That's, that's just uh, that's mean. Um, but what happened here, um, I'm looking, okay, here it was. A few days ago, I was in public, and a kid who was maybe four or five was acting out. His mother was struggling to keep her under control. So she pointed to me and told her son that I was one of Santa's elves, and I was watching him, and I would tell Santa about his behavior. Um, but the little, uh, the little per person, little person, he got back at him by saying, uh, the kid's name was on a ring on his backpack. So I just said, it's okay, Hunter, you're already on the nice list. And Santa told me you're getting an iPad for Christmas this year. (laughs) Hunter was excited. His mom was, uh, not of course. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of responses from, from people, um, you know, basically, Supporting this dwarf person. Is that? I don't. Little person. Little person. Little person. person. Yep. Yeah. Would it be wrong to say, uh, I wish I had a buddy that was a dwarf or a little guy, midget. Um, I'm often sticking my hands in places where my big, fat, meaty hands won't fit. You know, like yeah. there's a there's a bolt okay, way sure. down in there, and I got to get that thing. I can't even start it, let alone get a get a nut on it. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, how to, handy that would be to bring things yeah, full I circle. To, I used to use my kid for that all the time. Yeah, get it. I'd call him out to the shop <laughs> to bring and this get, full get this circle started for dad. You're looking for a mini me, basically from yeah. Austin Powers. Now, yep. Don, you met Vern Troyer. Troyer, what was his name? Vern, Vern Troyer. That's, yep, who had he a, was a bastard, yeah, wasn't he? And, yes, and he had a handler who was lifting him up and doing all these things. Yeah, what would Come Vern on. want wait, to go what? by? Wait, what? Wait, back up. The handler was what? Like lifting him up onto tables yeah, and he, such. Well, Vern Troyer came this? into the studio. I had been perusing his, you know, like his bio and stuff. Their publicist didn't send us anything, so I was searching the internet, and I happened to just have a picture of, um, it was him and his wife, who's like tall, blonde woman. She divorced him, or, you know, they got divorced, he hates her now. And he looked up, way, way up, and he was like, you better get that off your computer screen, or I'm not doing this interview. And was mean, and I was like, I I was just trying to find out more about you, I would never bring that up, I'm, I'm so sorry. And he's like really being a a butthole about it so they left the room and then when they came back in to do the interview he's his handler had him on his shoulders like a child and then he <laughs> lifted him up and put him on the table on the counter the studio <laughs> counter and it was really funny yeah that is it was hilarious. funny and i That's thought funny. i don't know um yeah i mean it, i don't know if they what the alternative would have been but it was just you know what, I, I thought he was just a jerk. Does that go with being that size? Cause, Maybe cause, he just, yeah. I mean, I've never seen, uh, quite honestly, he was extremely small in stature. How like, come really men? Really small in stature. How come men that are short, There's a we call it uh, the short man syndrome. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're often a little tyrants. But women that are short, I have never met a short or smallish woman Who's a who's a, a pain in the ass? Actually, Kenny, funny you should say that. They're almost always bubbly and have a great personality. They're fun. Yeah, you're right. I would say, um, as far as like 
Guys just stink in general. Great, like, like super energetic, just a ball of fun, but also a very good businesswoman. And you don't want to mess with her. Is our sales manager, Sonia? Over here. Sonia. Oh, yeah. Sonia is, I think, four eleven or four ten. Fellow diabetic pride, right there. So there you uh, go. And she is so cute. But I shouldn't say that. She's a grown woman. Get out of her way. That, get that's out of what her I, way. That's what I do. Best friends with Amy, our yeah. our uh, B. Arthur, yeah. our um, other manager, and they yeah. go they go head to head sometimes, and they just have it out. Oh I used really? To, uh, oh yeah. I used to have an office uh, when I came into the office beside uh, our big boss, Dan, right? Yeah. And, and she would go in there, <laughs> and the conversations, it was hard for me to write news some days because I'd just stop and listen to the <laughs> to the yelling. Well, not yelling, but just, you know she's what a I shark. mean. Back, back and forth between her and Dan. John, right? sometimes I would come out of my office, I would walk over there, and the door would be open, and I'd look at them both over the, over the top <laughs> of my glasses, and then I'd shut the door. And I'd walk yep. away. Yeah, like, Jesus, come on! Oh, yeah. have your it, fights it, it, in private. Uh, she's it's a, but she's she's a Spitfire, isn't she? Oh, and a huh? hell of a sales. Oh, manager. she's so good. I I I mean, I I'm afraid of her. Yeah, I well, want to please her. Like whenever she's like, "Well, we're going to do this," I'm like, "I will do it." Yes, yes. <laughs> whatever you say, please. The the spats between the two that you mentioned always kind of make me laugh. There's other people in the building that do similar things, and it always ends. Within an hour, it's water under the bridge, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. oh, she's my best friend. Such a great person. I'm like, really? The words that she hurled you know, at you for the last 30 minutes were John does daggers. This, doesn't this remind you of our relationship with Such? Yeah, exactly. Now that you brought it up, yes. Yeah. And that's a whole, I mean, we've delved into a whole different dynamic because I really wanted to go on and on about these little guys. Um, <laughs> but... I think some of the healthiest people, mentally healthy, are psychos like, I don't know, I'll just name Joe, who we just have these drop down, drag out, yelling, calling each other name fights. And the second they're over, they're over. Yeah, and everything's fine. And everything's normal again. Mm -hmm. And I've worked with other people who. Um, we'll never say a cross word to your face, but we'll do really mean, evil things behind your back. I'd rather deal with the person who's mean to my face. Yeah, and yeah. In, in my Absolutely. experience, and probably yours, because I think you guys have been through the battles more than I have, those people like the mayor or even the sales manager that you were referencing, those tend to be the people that will have your backs the most. That's true. Even Absolutely. if you've oh, gone toe-to-toe yeah. -to -toe with them. Yep. Oh, I've yep. never, I would never go toe-to-toe -to -toe Joe and Sonya. Matthew, Joe and Matthew have had a couple of fights that were so upsetting and disturbing to us that we would leave the office. You yeah. know, we're in the Hubbard building down towards the end of the hall. We'd go down to that common old lobby area, Dawn, where there's couches by the yeah. bathrooms, uh -huh. and we'd just sit there and wait for them to be over. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. What the heck did, I, as you call him, Matthew... Uh, oh, that's, yeah, yeah. Well, rookie Matthew. Matt. Rookie, how? What? What could he do that would make somebody mad? That guy it's, is the nicest guy. With Matthew, it's not about what he's done. It's mostly about what he doesn't do, <laughs> and, and, and that's that's where the disagreements come into hand. Yeah, that's true. And, and Joe tells him what he thinks he should be doing. Yeah, and then Matthew will get angry with that, and right. uh, and it'll What's go for his job. Man. What is Matthew's job? Show up, make quips. Make quips. Oh, really? He just gets to be like the. He just gets but to like. Uh, it's kind of all of our jobs. Yeah. You know, just no matter how much show prep I do or how uh -huh. mentally prepared I am for the show, it, it, most of the times, four days out of five, it doesn't matter because he's got his own idea on where the show is going to go in his oh, head. Joe? Yeah, yeah. And that's the way it goes. But it helps being very well read and kind of knowing. 
knowing um, the stories he might potentially talk of about. Of course. Oh, I see. So you, you uh, what he isn't doing is reading in advance, or <laughs> I really want to get down well, to the bottom of this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he doesn't take, know what's going on, and he's just yeah, tossing yeah, in, like, yeah, you, non sequiturs. Yeah. <laughs> remember? <laughs> Why are we doing this on the air? Never. Like, talk about someone else's performance. It's just, yeah. like, weird. Funny. But, this, I just really like Matthew. This yeah, gentleman Matthew. literally just just walked in and is probably Matthew. He's on the other side of the wall right now. So let's just tear him apart while he can't defend himself. <laughs> I love him. I, I don't think the show we is Geo without yeah. him. He's I, got I, great I, hair yeah. too. Oh no! Now yeah. he walked in. He can oh, hear yeah. we're talking about him. Come on in. Have him sit down. Come on. Oh, does he have headphones? Come on over, Matthew. Uh, sit down. I won't get you on camera, but okay. go sit by Don. Matthew is efforting headphones, and he's going to... Oh, no, he's not. Never mind. Let's just turn... It's, sometimes it's okay to be silent, Ross. It's what? okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm giving play-by-play. Play. <laughs> I know. What <laughs> mic number do you have there? Wow. I'm going on mic five, six. Okay, let's do this. Don taking jabs at me today. Uh, oh. I know. Uh, hey, I got to start swinging here. So, uh, is he listening? My, Matt, can you hear me? Yes, I can. So, we're talking about um, psychos and um, how <laughs> psychos are more prone to be mentally stable than the rest of them. And we were talking about Joe in this fact and how all of us have these massive fights with Joe, but the second they're over, they're over. They're they don't linger. The animosity doesn't linger. There's no grudges being held. And I made note of a few just massive drop-down, incredible fights that you've had with Such so bad that the rest of us get so nervous that we leave the office, we close the door, and we go down to the end of the hall and sit on a couch and wait for it to <laughs> blow by. 100%. Kenny, you're not, uh, you're not speaking out of school. Uh, we have had, I think the last major fight we had was a long time ago. But what happens is, it, it, it has to do with the show. This Always. was funny, this was not, don't yeah. do this, do this, and I... Right, and I, right. I very rarely speak up for myself because he has wonderful instincts for radio. Yeah. All he's, right. he's like my we wife. 99% of the time, he's right. Okay. okay. <laughs> Take it out of your mouth now. Now, right. anyway, thank anyway, you for but, covering that. But now, what did you do wrong? That's what I want to know. The, the last time we fought, it was a outright shouting match. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And then I, we both just said, F it, and then walked out. I walked out of the studio and went into the... Dub studio, yeah. and about three minutes later, I have to have the door closed, and I'm still steaming. He walks up, and his eyebrows are way up, and he looks in the window, and he kind of sheepishly opens the door and says, are we good? I'm like, yeah, we got it out of our system. It's, it's fine. He's like, okay, good. We're, we're, then we just went back to normal. Okay, so we, we got to tell. Let's tell I Dawn. I asked a lot of questions because I couldn't believe that you would do anything wrong because I th- said, why could anyone be mad at you? Because you, I you think you're the nicest guy ever. Here, you're, here's you're, why. Very, you're very kind, and I'll eat some uh, at the risk of seeming immodest. What Joe always says to me is he will come in on a dreary February morning when it's <laughs> Uh, snowing and 22 degrees, and he will make it seem like it's the 4th of July. That's just like this guy over here, too. So that's just like Ross, too. He's okay, a, so let's happy. talk. Don wants to know. Joe what, does that? No, Joe, Joe, says, that about, says, that Joe says that about me. So. No, oh, if, if he would, if he like, would, I don't agree. Right, because if Joe would come in on the Fourth of July, <laughs> yeah, he would make it seem like it's February, middle of February, and dreary, and it's, uh, the rain is soaking in. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. his. That's his wave. So you are a ray of sunshine. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I, you know, I hate, I don't like, to, I don't take compliments. Well, thank you, but uh, you know, I just, it's just okay. Okay, stop it, stop yep. it. Here, okay. yeah. here's the way, Don. Don, here's the deal. And this happened years ago up in Maplewood, I believe it was, where um, Joe had called um, Matthew into the studio to have a, a talk with Matt about his performance as of late and his contributions to the show. And a project. And, and he really laid it on the line and told him, here's what you need to do, mm-hmm. here's what you need to do, and do this and do that, and you really need to get your S together. And uh, Matt, uh, sheepishly, uh, from what I understand, you nodded and you walked out to your desk, and then Joe came out a, a few minutes later to add a couple things to the list. And and Matt, what did he find you doing at your desk? Instead of what he assigned, oh no! For some reason, <laughs> doodling. <laughs> for some reason, uh, adjacent to the John McDougal Memorial News Desk, there was a Taylor's tape. 
Uh, yeah. And it was just sitting there. I, don't, I have no idea why there would be a Taylor's tape sitting in the radio station. But what I did is I just said, hmm. I looked at it. I stared at it. And I said, I think I'm going to measure my head right now. <laughs> and so I took the Taylor's tape and put it around here. And as I'm, as I'm connecting my fingers to see what the measurement accuracy is, out of the, my peripheral vision, I see... Oh, shoot. <laughs> I knew exactly. And he goes, hey, DS, which is, hey, dumb. Yeah. That was his nickname. Hey, yeah. DS, what are you doing right now? And I'm measuring my head. He's, and that the look of the disgust, disdain. <laughs> it was like, I just gave you a project where you have to report back to me four months from now with whatever it was, yeah, and I'll get started you're measuring it. your head ten seconds later. He said, "You are just you're you're a, you're horrible." Oh, well, I think I would have said, um, uh, "I got to get my thinking cap on first. Uh, you know what? You're smarter than I am. I just it's just but, all out in the open. I'm let's my face head. it; it's his own fault. I mean, he's trying so hard to be a legitimate, you know. <laughs> Whose own uh, fault, Matthew? No, Joe. He's oh. trying to be a good host and talk about good, interesting things, and he's got the whole GL thing going. Uh, but he's surrounded himself with morons. I mean, John, you're, <laughs> uh, you're okay. Is, yeah, it makes yes. him look smarter. He really has, right. Yeah. It, it's, it, is it, that what it is? Oh. It brings a, uh, High tide raises all ships, right? Or what is that? Yeah. And, that's, yeah. uh, and I don't know what that means uh, for our personalities, but it's just, uh, you know, he is... A great guy to work with, and I can usually, nine times out of ten, I know what he's thinking. Uh-huh. Just like the other day when I said the um, the uh, the Ukraine uh, ammunition crates. They, they found crates of ammunition in Ukraine. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I said to Joe, describe the crates. And he said, well, they're... They're they're made of wood, <laughs> and you have to get a crowbar to open them. And when they when you open the the crowbar of ammunition, uh, it, it the the wood uh, makes noises. I mean, it was just it was like a, a Christmas story when they're oh, opening okay. up the yes. uh, yeah. similar to that. And fragile, I just, fragile, fragile, and uh, or if I say um, uh, I can't think of a great example, but I can. Uh, we have the 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 cartoon bubble. We had a, a a cartoon bubble of chimps that made tools. Okay, right. um, way back when they made their own tools, and I said, "Give me the uh, cartoon bubble of the the chimp at work right now." And he said, "Well, he's got the he's got the blacksmith apron on, and he's working on the the deal." And I said, "Describe his his what is he having for lunch?" And he says, "Well, he has the the silver." Lunch pail with the uh, the thermos with yeah, the silver the lid, thermos and it's in the lid, yeah. it's compl- and it's just I knew that's if I if I if I drew that out of him I knew that's where we were going. Well, and I think you you have a good idea of when can I give him something that's going to make him crack and maybe when do we need to stay serious. But I think of this from your twenty four seven stream that you've put a lot of work into. Yes, the one that cracks me up the most is you told him to change the channel. Because Maury had on oh all God. the oh the three God. year olds that were like yes. two hundred and forty pounds. <laughs> it was the middle of the show. We were in Maplewood, and we had we had TVs, and, and it was a local show, and it was Maury, and Maury had on uh, babies that were three hundred pounds. They were little kids, but they were super chubby, and they had diapers on. And I said, "Go to go to nine, go to nine, go to nine. And while he's doing the show, and As he's he looked, on the air. he looked, and he, he just started. He always had the weather on, the weather channel, on. <laughs> and he, he flipped, and he's like, "What are these?" And he just went. <laughs> <laughs> so he could not stop laughing for four minutes. It was he's like he told me to change the channel to Maury, and what are these babies? Giant babies that have underwear on or diapers or and it was just it was that was a that was a fun. I do like to sidetrack him. So Don, w- with all of these stories and us describing him over the last year and a half to you, um, I, I've been kind of quietly behind the scenes. You know, I'm shadow management. Trying to get them to uh, have you come on board GL when, like, say, Chris <laughs> and Matt is gone, and be a fill-in. Uh, how, how do you how do you feel yeah, about filling in on, 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 on GL? Show off to go by Joy. Uh, 
Enjoy. Yeah, show me the money. That's what I say. There we go. First things first. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. First, let's sell this podcast <laughs> that I've been on for a year and a half. How's Thank, that you, cash flow? Thank you, DK Later. Mags. Don't want to ignore them, of right? course. Yes. Um, and then we'll talk about <laughs> other projects. Okay. So the cash flow is... is but I'm just wondering how you're going to react when he, like, um, uh, uh, who is it? Ross said, he calls you joy for the first six months you've been there. <laughs> or what's your deal? Oh, oh, you're it. having a bad hair day. What oh. the hell's wrong that's with your face? Okay. I'll be like, well, Jack, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's what you got to say. You got to give it right back to him. See, yeah. I think it's a match made in heaven. I think you should absolutely <laughs> be on because I, I would love to see you two scrap. That would be a lot of fun. Oh, man. Are we done here? Yes. Yeah, we, we, have we, to we be. can be done. I'll give you your music, which means you I, have I'd like 15 to go longer. seconds. Can I, is this, am I, <laughs> welcome my welcome to the show. Matthew, my first, uh, okay. wrap, it, wrap it up for us. Not your first time. So if you want to check out the Krabby Coffee Shop, you can do that at pod mn and if you'd like to find out other podcasts why you'd want to find another Three podcast seconds. i'm not sure why but uh the crabby Thank coffee you. shop i gotta go take a dump i'll be right back coffee shop. <laughs> new episodes drop every week wherever you get your podcasts <laughs> dk mags on old eight in new brighton is our full service gun shop with a wide selection of pistols, revolvers, ammo, and accessories, like, you know, holsters, magazines, suppressors, the likes. Uh, And if you have a specific firearm in mind, special orders are no problem at DK Mags. They'll be more than happy to assist you in tracking down and purchasing that firearm and or accessory you want. If you have a firearm you don't want or need, DK Mags also buys firearms, and we're talking from single units to entire estates. Both DK Mags and Monticello Pond and Gun, they have uh, gunsmithing services to help keep that firearm in perfect working order. Or maybe you need to revive some old iron. Check out the website at dkmags.com. But keep in mind, the website does not list what's in the store, so you're going to have to stop in or give them a call. Great selection, fair prices, and a wonderful staff at both DK Mags on Old 8 in New Brighton and Monticello Pond and Gun, dkmags.com.